everybody. Welcome back to today's Bible study. I'm your speaker, J2 Mally9681. And it's getting close to October here. So I need to get another Bible study going. I've just been busy. And we've got three kinds of people from some scriptures, passages in the book of Psalm, uh, the book of Proverbs. And there are a lot more passages than what I have, but this is just a short Bible study. So go ahead at your leisure and pause the video and give yourself a word of prayer before we get started. All right, we are going to be doing a study on the naive, the smart aleck, and the rebel. And this is all in Proverbs. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 1. We're going to read verse 7 and verse 22. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now the fear of the Lord, it's not an emotional thing. The fear of the Lord, I believe, is mistranslated. It's the following of the Lord, is that you follow him. And the Lord, as in the Old Testament, is a word that was put in to replace what was originally said for God, for Elohim, the name of Elohim, which I believe is Yahuwah, not Yahweh, not Jehovah. I'm not saying that those are, co are completely wrong, but as far as I know, as far as my studies go, those are mistranslations. I could be wrong, I don't know, but that is my devotion. I don't use that against anybody, that's just my personal devotion with Elohim. But the fear of the Lord, that's following Yahuwah, is the beginning of knowledge, but fools, and we'll get to that in verse 22, despise wisdom and instruction. Anyone who's going to rebel against, against Elohim is going to despise wisdom and instruction, not just from Elohim, but from anywhere. That's just what rebels do. Now in verse 22, how long, you simple ones, that's the naive, will you love simplicity? And the scorners, that's the smart Alex, or the mockers, delight in their scorning, and fools, that's the rebels, hate knowledge. So the beginning of knowledge is to respect and obey the Lord, respect and obey Yahuwah. Respect and obey Elohim, the Father, His Son, Yahshua, Jesus Christ, Hamashiach, and the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. Now these other words I'm using are also Hebrew along with the, with the English. Someone who rebels against the Lord will reject wise and good advice and instruction. It is a wonder of how long must the naive follow simple ways and be misled. It is a wonder how long smart Alex make fun of wisdom believing they know so much more when they know nothing. And even the, the LGBT or however those groups are called, I'll put it up on the screen of what I'm talking about. All those homosexual groups and other groups of such that they think that they, are, that they know so much more and that's why they mock us because they're smart Alex. Not all of them are, but those who are actually acting out are. And, and they're always calling us bigots. They don't even know what a bigot is. A true bigot in the dictionary is not someone who is highly intolerant against something that they don't believe in. That's not originally what a bigot is. That was, that was a slang definition made up. A true bigot is somebody who ha who g gets married to other people while they are still married to, to someone else. That's, that is a bigot. And so if you want to use the slang definition of bigot and bigotry to somebody, you need to pay attention to what you are saying because you are an even bigger bigot, if that would be the case. So, like I said in here, they don't know nothing when they believe that they know so much more about something that they know nothing about. And it is a wonder of how long rebels act so foolishly and hate the knowledge of Jesus Christ. 
Now in Proverbs chapter 9, in verse 8. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man and he will love you. That is so true. So someone who is a smarty pants will throw all kinds of hate towards you if you correct them. Someone who learns from mistakes will have love for the neighbor who corrects them. That's not just towards, you know, like stuff that's going on in this earth right now, like homosexuals and all. This also goes towards people who claim to be Christians. And there are those who truly are, but they're letting other parts of the world become their knowledge over what God says to do and they believe they're doing the right thing and they start doing the same kind of thing and they become scorners. You don't want that to happen. You don't want to let that happen. And that's what gives the whole thing in Christianity a bad name is stuff like that. Now in Proverbs 14 we got a few here. Verse 6 through 7 a scorner seeks wisdom and finds it not, but knowledge is easy unto him that understands. Go from the presence of a foolish man when you perceive not in him the lips of knowledge. Now verse 15 and 16, the simple believe every word, but the prudent man looks well into his going. A wise man fears and departs from evil, but the fool rages and is confident. Now in verse 18, the simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. So, small Alex will not gain wisdom when they make fun of it because they are conceited in what they believe they know to be more true than real truth. And it will be unwise to hang out with those who mock and are smart Alex because they have absolutely double space, I don't know how that happened, nothing good to teach you. People who are naive are easily misled and will believe on the words of anyone who speaks. Even I've been guilty of that before in the past. Wise people will watch out for incorrect information. Wise people will avoid dangerous situations, but rebellious people will show their pride in themselves and are careless of dangerous situations. The naive will believe all they hear and are shown of having such negative sense of judgment. The naive will believe all they hear and are shown of having such negative sense of judgment. So people who follow the Lord and his teachings will receive wisdom and knowledge. Now, Proverbs 15 verse 1 and verse 12, a soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. A scorner loves not one that reproves him, neither will he go unto the wise. So when you give an answer to someone, it should be soft and gentle. Being harsh in your words can only cause discomfort. Those who sneer at others do not like to be corrected and despise requesting help from others who have common sense given from the Lord. Now, it's not just in that. It can be other things within this world that also proves that point. And has anybody ever noticed that in these groups that support homosexuality and transgender ident identity and all this other kind of stuff going on, have you ever noticed that this kind of stuff is exactly how they act? I have a friend where she and I haven't even spoke since she had moved away. But she has, fr has friends who, homo who are homosexual or even bisexual, and if you have anything wrong, anything to say against them, even if you're not mocking, you're not throwing harsh words or anything like that, she is so ignorant to understand and so easy to, li to, be to believe other people who say that Christ accepts homosexuals in his kingdom and all this kind of stuff. It's like, you know what? You are, you are becoming so naive and you don't want anyone to listen. You don't want to listen to what anyone has to say, but you want people to hear you out. And I have actually been in the place with her where harsh words can lead to, dis to cause discomfort. I've done that in the past. That's because during that, those particular times, I was going through a religious phase. So 
even I was in the wrong by using harsh words. See, even a, even a real Christian can get caught into this kind of stuff not realizing what they're doing. And it was the Lord, through the Spirit, who helped me and convicted me on it. And that's how I ended up giving, gaining the common sense. But this friend of mine, I still don't believe even today that she has gained that common sense because she still supports those groups. I do not, but I'm not going to sit there and throw harsh words on top of them. Now, for those of them who don't want to listen, that's fine. That's their business. God will deal with them. My job is to talk with them lovingly and then pray for them and show them the truth of Jesus Christ. Show them the truth of Yahshua. That's what my job is. If they turn away from it and they mock or they're rebellious or whatever, then that's fine. Let them do what they're doing because God will take care of that. Now, Proverbs 19, verse 29. Judgments are prepared for scorners and struck for the back of fools. So God has judgment prepared for all those who mock others and who rebel against others are just waiting for a beating to be given back to them. And that's what happens to rebels who, who, who attack like that. There are judgments that, that God gives on this earth and then there are judgments in the there is a judgment in the end just waiting if you don't turn and that's the thing so proverbs 21 verse 11 and verse 24 when the scorner is punished the simple is made wise and when the wise is instructed he receives knowledge 24 proud and haughty scorner in is his name you know the scorner proud and haughty is the scorner's name, that's what it's saying, who deals in proud wrath. So when the naive witness for themselves that mockers become punished, the naive will see it better to be wise and receive instruction from those who are wise and they will receive knowledge. The scorners become so proud of what they believe they know and show just how they use what they know in promoting wickedness by their actions. And all of this is precisely what's going on. I don't know how much more clear we can make it before the day comes. But we obviously cannot make it clear because people don't want to open their, their eyes and open their hearts. Pro now Proverbs chapter 22 verse 10. Cast out the scorner, and contention shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. And so, when we drive out all of those who mock at what is right in the eyes of God, arguments and insults and all types of fighting will stop. And there are times where we're going to have to put our feet down and tell people, okay, that's enough and I think it's time for you to go. And sometimes we'll have to do that to our own brothers and sisters in Christ. There are times where it's going to have to happen. And now this is the final stretch. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 9. The thought of foolishness is sin and the scorner is an abomination to men. And so Rebellious thoughts are not the way of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach. And those who mock at what God says is right and wrong will receive no respect from people who follow God. And if you look at how things are in the world today, that's exactly what's going on. Now, I will say this also, that a lot of people who are doing this, not all of them are, are, li are like this, but there are a lot who are doing this and they will show so little respect to the point that they're letting their emotions take control of them and they are making themselves look just as bad for doing what is against Proverbs chapter 15 verse 1 to give a soft answer and to not use grievous words. So we all really need to think about this kind of stuff and really think about how 
we are to answer things. We shouldn't answer on our own accord in, in the first place. Let God speak through you. That's the best way that you can let that happen. And that's going to be it for this one, folks. If you all have any questions or comments, just regular comments, you can just leave them in the comment section of this video. But if you have any questions, prayer requests, anything of that nature, I'll leave a link to my discussion page on my main channel, and you can ask me there. You can give your prayer request there. Until next time, this is JT O'Malley, 9681, and Yahuwah be with you. Shalom, and I bear this Bible study in the name of thy son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen.